ஜிக்கல் So, with the increasing uh, global burden of diabetes, the, uh, the uh, diabetic foot disease is also uh, expanding and accounting for 20% hospital admissions in the diabetic patients. Up to 75% of the lower extremity amputations, the cause may be diabetes. In an overcrowded uh, OPD in the rural area, especially, the uh, diabetic foot examination uh, may, uh, or the foot examination may be missed. And uh, this is a um, greatest problem. Uh, drawback and most amputations are preventable in india the hallmark of diabetic foot infection is the uh, foot ulcers with maggots barefoot habit of walking barefoot massage and poultice application on the bones and home re- use of home remedies so we are losing every 20 seconds a, lo- a limb due to diabetes and we need a guideline bo- based approach so and it has been found in a study in 2015 uh, based on the uh, iwdf guidelines that uh, there was improved management of foot problems in persons with diabetes and worldwide reduction in tragedies caused by these uh, problems okay so um, uh, in 2019 these guidelines were revised and uh, they were mainly addressing these uh, key points that is prevention of uh, foot ulcers assessment and classification of diabetic foot ulcers offloading uh, of foot ulcers diagnosis prognosis and management of peripheral arterial disease treatment of dfi interventions to enhance healing of foot ulcers all the recommendations were made and which I, and i am covering those uh, uh, recommendations in detail here so in the preventive aspect of the diabetic foot ulcers uh, first of all let us look into why do diabetic patients get uh, foot problems it is a why the foot is vulnerable due to presence of triopathy of the foot altered biomechanics and the uh, rupture of the plantar fascia so majority of the diabetic foot ulcers are from inside out they are biomechanical and it due, due to functional uh, alterations due to anatomical uh, changes and due to the advanced glycosy- glycosylation products deposited in the connective tissue in the patients with diabetes a natural history of diabetic foot disease is a callus pro- progressing to gangrene uh, if the uh, i mean due to infection and uh, uh, neglected diabetic foot disease early surgery may help it out and diabetic foot uh, wounds are starred and there is deposition of excess inflammatory response uh, uh, markers as uh, cytokines interleukins and proteases preventing wound contraction epithelialization the peak plantar pressures in diabetics uh, foot are raised because of the presence of the motor neuropathy presence of deformities so the uh, pressures are higher and as a result the anoxia and ischemia which is present during the normal walking the patient of diabetes fails to recover from this anoxia and ischemia with the result that there is uh, the delayed due to delayed recovery there is inflammation warmth and erythema in the foot during the normal process of walking formation of blisters if it is exaggerated and neglected on the, in the neuropathic foot and leads to the breakdown skin breakdown or the ulceration so uh, the uh, various factors risk factors for diabetic foot ulcer are the uncontrolled uh, glycemic status uh, status increasing in the duration of the diabetes uh, peripheral vascular disease patient is having retinopathy and visual loss and the age increasing age of the patient apart from the local factors such as history of prior ulcers history of amputation and limited joint mobility the transfer ulcers they occur after the amputation of grade 2 as seen in this uh, patient and um, these uh, um, uh, are more severe uh, after the amputations the hammer and claw claw deformities the dorsal callus occur they occur after the motor neuropathy and uh, due to the uh, retraction of the protective pad of fat from underneath the first metatarsal head and uh, the contraction at the both the interphalangeal uh, joints and the mtp joints so the extensors are dominant we have the hammer or the retracted toes if the flexors are dominant then we have the mallet or the claw toes where both the interphalangeal joints are flexed and there is prominence of the metatarsophalangeal joints so in uh, if the mallet and claw toes the apical lesions at the tip of the toe are more common dorsal lesions are more common with the hammer of the retracted toes so we can see that there is a tip top toe ulcers and uh, 
In the equinus deformity, there is a risk of uh, um, ulceration is as high as uh, 40% due to elevated plantar pressures and uh, tendroclus lengthening may help in reducing the, uh, these pressures and restoring the biomechanical balance. The uh, recurrent uh, for diabetic foot ulcers may be as high as 40 to 50 percent of the cases and the presence of the deformities and the previous ulcer is the highest risk for the recurrence of the ulcer. So we can use the customized in source post-surgery or in the patients with the active ulcers. And then uh, customize in soles and as well as the modified outsoles and the modified footwear, which is accommodative uh, for the deformities. So the prevention guidelines, according to prevention guidelines, the foot care education to the patient, family and healthcare providers is a must and pro provide the uh, protective therapeutic footwear for the at-risk feet. And the instructions about the foot self-management by temperature measurement, et cetera, should be given and treat the risk factors for recurrent ulcerations. So uh, the assessment and classification of these foot lesions is a must. So foot assessment, uh, we should, uh, uh, for foot ulcer prevention, there are five keystones or the cornerstones are the identifying the at-risk foot, regularly inspecting and examining the at-risk foot at inter decided intervals, educating the entire family and uh, ensuring the routine wear of the, or the proper uh, wearing even inside the house and outside the house, the footwear and treating the risk factors for ulceration. So areas of foot at highest risk of ulceration are at the um, tip of the toes, then the metatarsal head, the heel and uh, on the dorsum uh, on the uh, at the metasophalangeal joints. So the risk uh, stratification uh, system, it decides uh, how frequently uh, they, this patient should be called. In patients with low risk, once a year examination is uh, much. With the loss of uh, either the protective sensation or presence of peripheral arterial disease, once in every six months, we should see the patient moderate uh, ulcer risk or the gray, uh, category two. Once in every three months, examination has been should be done for the patients with uh, loss of protective sensation along with PAD or LOPS with foot deformity or PAD with foot deformity. In high risk cases, very high risk, so category three cases, once in uh, every month, they should be seen uh, because these patients along with LOPS and PAD, they have history of prior foot ulcers, lower extreme history of amputation and end stage renal disease also. So the comprehensive foot examination is a must. And it should, apart from the history of the various uh, risk factors, it should include the sensory testing, the vascular, the monofilament, biothesometry, heat fold, sensitometry, vascular assessment, foot pressure assessment, the assessment of the skin for color, temperature, presence of callus, edema, pre ulcerative signs, bone and joint for deformities, abnormal bony prominences. And the patient should be examined in the walking posture, the gait should the patient should be examined, and also in the lying down and the weight bearing position for the foot. Foot care limitations, foot care limitations like loss of vision, etc., should be discussed. Foot Foot care should be taught to the patient along with the footwear. So evaluation of patient must be done as a whole apart from the examination of the foot uh, ulcer and um, uh, radio imaging and lab investigation may be done. So these are the monofilament, the foot pressure mat, the uh, segmental pressure testing and the foot scan machines. Uh, in DFU patients, we use the Sindhabad system for categorizing the ulcers for and it helps in the audit and communication between amongst the health professionals. And if we should not use any other classification scoring system to offer for an individual prognosis for DFU patient, for an individual patient. For infected DFU, we can use uh, the ITSA and uh, classific infection classification to guide the infection management. And Wi-Fi scoring is done to assess the perfusion likelihood for be of benefit with the revascularization procedures. So Sindhabad uh, classification uh, is based on the ulcer characteristics. Now, offloading of the ulcers, non-removable knee-high offloading devices have clear healing benefits over the removable uh, devices. And in the non-plantar, the dorsal ulcers, we use a removable ankle-high offloading devices or the accumulative footwear, the toe sp spaces or, or the other arthrosis, depending upon the location or the type of the ulcer. In patients with plantar forefoot and midfoot ulcer, where infection or ischemia is present, we, uh, if the case is mild infection ischemia, then we can use a non-removable knee-high offloading device. If both uh, a mild infection, mild ischemia, moderate infection ischemia are present or severe infection ischemia, then we can use the removal type of uh, knee-high offloading devices. If uh, it's important primarily to also address the infection and or ischemia and consider the using a removable offloading device. If the patient is not tolerating a non-removable device, then also we can switch over to the removable offloading devices and similar to the patients having no infection or ischemia. Then in the plantar heel ulcer, we again consider the knee-high offloading device. Our offload, uh, it can be removable or non-removable. 
and if the ulcer fails to heal or if a digital ulcer then we can if the digital ulcer we consult for digital flexor tenotomy or the surgical offloading uh, procedures if the ulcer fails to heal despite using the uh, uh, medical these offloading uh, devices so we can see that pelted foam ulcer dressing may be used in the cases um, with the plantar ulcers or the dorsal ulcers and these are uh, along with the accommodative footwear in non removable knee high offloading uh, tcc we can see it's the gold standard for offloading these ulcers and ortho wedge shoes um, removable cast walkers these are the offloading removable offloading devices which can be used if the patient is not tolerating the non removable of their contraindicate contraindication in cases with severe ischemia where the non removable de uh, de offloading devices cannot be used for surgical methods of offloading if if these with the routine uh, offloading devices if it, they do not work then we go for te tendo achilles uh, lengthening of metatarsal head resection or osteotomies and correction of foot deformities apart from callus debridement as a routine so surgical offloading uh, procedure for the various ulcers at various locations uh, we can see that uh, um, here in this patient we can do the flexor tenotomy or the plantar fascia release to heal the ulcer then the keller gap arthroplasty to heal the interphalangeal or the metaphalangeal joint ulcers fhl tenotomy for the interphalangeal joint ulcers we can see the percutaneous flexor tenotomy tendon release to straighten the toes cloto correction gradle stone procedure mallet to correction fdl flexor digitorum longus tenotomy plantar forefoot ulcers ta lengthening or gastrocnemius soleus resection is done to reduce the forefoot lo loading and we can see the obvious changes in the pedo biographic um, foot uh, foot scan for foot ulcer we get excision of the prominent metatarsal head which can be done in advanced neuropathic cases to reduce the forefoot pressure or the prominent metatarsal single head can also be taken off we can see the healing of the ulcer which is done metatarsal metatarsal osteotomy to again surgically offload so the diagnosis prognosis and management of pad if it exists along with uh, dfu it may be uh, the incidence may be as high as in 50% of the cases due to infracorporeal uh, disease and the uh, first uh, we have to evaluate the patient for pad we should do the palpation of the pedal pulses and um, the ankle brachial index if the patient, if the patient has abi uh, between 0.9 to 1.3 brachial index uh, 0.75 and triphasic pedal doppler waveform it's very um, less likely to have pad as a diagnosis use the wifi classification Uh, as a means to stratify amputation risk, and even the vascular imaging, uh, urgent vascular imaging should be asked if the toe pressures are less than 30 mm or TCPO2 is less than 50 or ankle pressures are less than 50. So, aim of revascularization is to again restore the direct blood flow to at least one of the foot arteries or to that anatomic region of the ulcer. And further treatment by the multidisciplinary team, and urgently assess and treat the patient of PAD and DFI to due to high risk of major limb, uh, uh, limb amputation in the infected cases. Avoid revascularization if the patient, uh, from the patient's perspective, the risk benefit ratio is unfavorable, and intensive cardiovascular risk is there. So cessation of smoking, hypertension treatment, dyslipidemia treatment, uh, etc., should be taken care of. So, uh, the patient, uh, as fifty percent of the diabetic foot ulcers may get infected, and maybe even at the outset they may present as a foot and uh, infected uh, foot ulcers. So we have to uh, look uh, for the at least two signs of uh, inflammation to be present. plantar spaces are uh, the closed uh, in the uh, they are uh, and guarded by the um, unique structural foot anatomy of the rigid fascia bony compartments and uh, this leads to build up of um, uh, and compression of the neurovascular bundle also foot artery foot disease is an end artery disease uh, with the arteriosclerosis of the metatarsal arteries and the infection of the foot can reach up to the leg because of the tino ascending tinosynovitis Initial lesion begins as a break in the skin envelope, and uh, they may occur due to minor traumas. For limb salvage, pick up the infection early, and a multidisciplinary approach, apart from the complete guideline-based approach, is a must for limb salvage. We can see the various ways in which they present as minor foot infections, web space infections, and they even go to gangrene, neglected cases, web space infection at the dorsum. Then we can see the peronychia and wet gangrene of the toe, distal foot calluses and ulceration, leading to loss of limbs, partial or the complete amputations, infected heat ulcer, central plantar space abscess. We can see the necrosis and infective gangrene of third toe spreading along the flexor aspect of the foot, thrombosis, infective thrombosis of the digital arteries.
So diabetic foot disease is much more than what we can see uh, from the clinical examination. Medial plantar space abscess, lateral plantar space abscess, dorsal foot plegmon, malperforance ulcer along the metatarsal head, necrotizing fasciitis infection, which is the most fulminant infection and um, with dishwatery pus, and it may lead to receive uh, systemic symptoms as well. Poor right outcome is seen in infected uh, diabetic foot ulcer cases associated with high mortality. So infection is more prevalent, as I said, in the Asian countries, and we are difficult to battle it because of the lack of the infrastructure and also with the, due to the lack of the trained staff. So the uh, diabetic foot disease is mostly tackled first by the physician, and then later on, he refers it to the surgeon. So uh, it is the interaction with the general practitioner, podiatrist, and diabetic nurse, surgeon, and a multidisciplinary team at the various levels, especially at the level three. So the principles of ulcer treatment, pressure offloading, ulcer protection, restoration, tissue perfusion, treatment of uh, infection, metabolic control, and treatment of comorbidities, local ulcer care. These are the uh, five cornerstones of managing an ulcer. And we can see then while managing a diabetic foot that after um, uh, practicing the preventive aspect, still the patient develops an ulcer. We assess, do a complete foot assessment, classify the lesion, do the, uh, start with the offloading measures in antibiotic treatment. If it, if it is radio imaging proves that it's a radio osteomyelitis, then we go for that. Um, surgical treatment of the infection and the osteomyelitis. So uh, reasonable glycemic control definitely uh, helps ulcer uh, healing. And um, as we can see in these two studies, uh, in the perioperative treatment, it is important that for minor surgical cases, also tight glycemic control is maintained. In the, and in the type 2 cases, oral, we, we stop the metformin 48 hours prior to surgery and resume after the renal function tests are being done. We stop the morning dose on the day of surgery, check blood glucose one to two hours till the patient resumes the oral diet. For the insulin-dependent diabetics, we go for long-acting uh, long insulin has to be stopped an evening prior and we switch over to the intermediate insulin or the long uh, or the uh, uh, and that to reduce doses to prevent the uh, um, hypoglycemia. And then um, for the major elective uh, and the elective surgeries, we go for the uh, combined glucose, insulin, potassium infusions in the um, required doses, which have been already, it's a physician population. So it's well known. Apart from that, the correction of the hydration in electrolytes is, uh, is a must for these patients. Uh, and we have also ascertain if there is diabetic ketosis in severely infected cases. Then the uh, antibiotic protocol for, for the mild cases, we go by the oral route and we uh, usually uh, target the gram positive uh, coca in these cases and clindamycin, linzolate, uh, the macrolide antibiotics, doxycycline, first generation cephalosporins may be used in moderate or severe infection. We target the gram positive and gram negative um, bacilli and also the anaerobes and um, injectable or the parenteral therapy is uh, asked for the carbamylam, clindamycin, metronidazole, ceftazidine, uh, maybe the drug of choice initially to start with and then later on the, uh, depending upon the deep tissue culture. So uh, the medical and surgical treatment in osteomyelitis cases, we have to consider uh, consulting a surgeon if there is severe infection, moderate infection, complicated by extensive gangrene, necrotizing fasciitis in the signs, or the uh, or there is gas in the separatist tissues, so or limb threatening or life threatening compartment syndrome. In uncomplicated cases, these uh, the uh, physician himself. Uh, considers on the oral antibiotics and uh, uh, even without surgical resection of the bone. Uh, however, the concomitant soft tissue infection is there and it's mild that, all, that uh, has to be referred to the surgeon and surgical consultation uh, depending on that we have to remove the infected part. Uh, we have to select the antibiotic agent, agents as per the uh, clinical studies or specifically or, or those who are drugs which are chosen in the clinical trials. Then antibiotic therapy should be done for six weeks, one uh, IV for a week initially and within first to two Four, two to four weeks, we come to know whether the infection is responding or not. If it doesn't respond, then we can immediately stop that antibiotic bone biopsy taken for the culture uh, after surgical resection or it taken as a, just as a biopsy and we can start with the alternative antibiotic regime can be started and then later on we can get start according to the uh, cultural course. So, um, diagnosing soft tissue diabetes infection by local and systemic signs of inflammation within 40, 24 hours is must, and at least one uh, person in the emergency team must see the patient within 24 hours of admission. And uh, based on the uh, say it's a classification, the severity of infection is decided. Hospitalization of the patient diabetics in patients with moderate infection with comorbidities and severe uh, foot infections is asked for. And we have to uh, uh, ask, apart from the CBC, the CRP, ESR, and procalcitonin biomarkers can also be 
be um, done if the clinical examination is not so uh, evident because most of these foot uh, infection patients are the immunocompromised patients. So the signs of inflammation may not be so much masked. And also there may be skip lesion, the possibility of skip lesion, the uh, possibility of widespread infection higher up can be there. And that, that has to be looked for. In suspect osteomyelitis probe test, ESR, CRP, uh, procalcitonin plain x-rays are good enough for initial diagnosis. We do not need very advanced imaging initial, but in doubtful or the equivocal courses, we need bone biopsy and the uh, advanced radio imaging. So antibiotics recommendation for osteomyelitis cases in un uncomplicated, as I said, uh, for foot osteomyelitis or in the uncomplicated uh, soft tissue infection cases, is six weeks uh, antibiotics can be given. And um, suspected osteomyelitis along with soft tissue infection, selection of antibiotics is done according to the recommended drugs in the clinical trial. Duration of antibiotics uh, if the infection doesn't respond, as I said, in one or two weeks, then we can think for alternative antibiotic regimen or, and start the alternative therapy after bone biopsy and surgical resection. So the route of administration is apparent if the, in mild to in, in moderate to severe cases and severe cases of DFI initially, then later on switch to oral depending upon the response. If the non-healing ulcer uh, infection or the infection not resolving in four weeks, then we should consider to re for re-evaluation. So, um, Again, um, the uh, indication for conservative treatment and surgical treatment, so it's a medico-surgical um, uh, border at which this disease lies. And most of these cases can be managed unless and until associated with a soft tissue infection. They can be managed on antibiotics and oral and dressings or conservative management. So if uh, the signs, the systemic signs of infection, widespread necrosis, gangrene, etc., air capitis are present, disproportionate pain to clinical findings, CLI, excess bone destruction, and uncontrolled infection, then it is a limb threatening or a life threatening infection. In suspects, so, uh, overall, uh, when we are managing a case of diabetic foot infection, after the initial assessment, classifying the, um, uh, the entire uh, infection into mild, moderate, and severe, and or depending on the ITSA classification, we should ascertain the need for hospital and reassess after hospitalization two to seven days. If the patient is improving, then it is good. Then we can ask him for or give him a date for follow-up. It's not improving in two to seven days despite hospitalization. Again, re-evaluate the patient. Similarly, for severe infection, we have to again reassess at least once daily instead of in, in two to seven days in the mild to moderate cases. So diabetic food consultation and consultant is an architect of the multidisciplinary team. And this approach is essential for lymph salvage and prevent amputation by 49 to 85%. Surgical management to achieve and maintain weight-bearing planting rate food, to restore and maintain adequate soft tissue envelope, and to abolish and minimize risk factors that threaten either of the above. These are the aims of the surgical management of the foot. And we classify these surgeries uh, into elective, prophylactic, curative, and emergent. And uh, according to these guidelines, uh, local and systemic signs of uh, inflammation uh, help in diagnosing the uh, soft tissue uh, diabetic foot infection. And uh, we should assess the severity, as I said, depending upon the classification. Hospitalization is a must in, again, so repetition, severe foot cases and the moderate infection with comorbidities. So advanced imaging, as I already said, the signs of again it's a repetition. So surgical uh, debridement, uh, sharp debridement is uh, considered to be this more superior over the other topical debriding and other methods of debridement. And uh, we can see in these it's a grade four infection how the debridement was done. Later on, grafting was done, and then this is uh, again debridement with uh, with an amputation done. First metatarsal head was removed, and here again debridement with the grade two amputation, grade four infection, and then here the graft uh, post uh, debridement after the wound granulate to put the SSG. In partial amputation, so operative mortality rate is less than one percent, five year survival rate is higher, and so they allow the independent gait. So these are superior to going than, than going for the props, uh, for the uh, major limb amputations. And it, uh, by collect, selecting an appropriate level, uh, we have to consider whether there is gangrene, osteomyelitis, adequate soft, soft tissue coverage is present or not. And also patient preferences and biomechanical uh, consideration has to be taken. For the hallux uh, amputation, we can see here biomechanically viable foot with the uh, viable grade two after uh, four toes amputation, then transmetatarsal amputation offers the advantage of a walking stump. It's major amputation. So we have to consider post salvage, post limb uh, salvage, and post um, uh, amputation. We have to again consider certain balancing procedure, certain uh, certain time prosthetics, custom uh, or, or accommodative function, orthotics, bracing, etc. 
feel as sir treated conservatively so reconstructive surgery after uh, this we are good putting the grafts or the flaps after extensive surgery use of back therapy then we can see the ssg being with the we can see the local advancement flap we can see after charcot foot surgery how the patient is uh, the foot is being reconstructed exostectomy in a um, cold uh, charcot foot posterior angioplasty after the grade 2 amputation to allow the amputation fossa to heal completely then severe calcarine osteomyelitis case where the uh, debridement followed by vac therapy followed by reverse sural artery flap to enhance full healing of foot as well the sharp debridement uh, is preferred sucrose sucrose octosulfate impregnated dressings systemic hyperbaric oxygen uh, can be used as an adjunctive treatment even the negative pressure wound therapy uh, has been recommended for as an adjunctive therapy use of placenta derived products autologous combined leukocyte can be used as an adjunctive treatment however do not use growth factors autologous uh, prps uh, engineered skin electricity magnet or other physical agents and um, in interventions in aimed at nutritional status uh, are not uh, recommended and do not use antimicrobial agents for accelerating healing or any topical oxygen therapy these are not recommended according to iwgdf there are variety of wound care project uh, categories which are available hydrogel has um, had the uh, uh, apparent benefit okay. the standard of care practices uh, among these uh, all debridement and uh, wound offloading vascular assessment infection control plus they all receive a strong recommendation So, summarizing, majority of diabetic foot disease is tackled in a physician's OPT, and a foot examination must never be missed. It's a two-minute procedure, and regular foot screening, foot care, and foot wear education is a must for foot salvage. And uh, according to the risk uh, foot risk uh, stratification score, we should allow not only give the patient a follow-up date, but also give them reminders. So, offloading is must and has good healing outcomes for DFU. Surgical outcome depends upon the stage of diabetic foot disease, and high index of suspicion is also. a must for diagnosing it and this should be clear in the mind of physician to diagnose it and also early referral um, is a must for a good outcome sharp surgical debridement is superior to other methods of debridement most dfus yield only a quarter of them would need amputation amputation is viewed as a reconstructive procedure not as an ablative procedure alone reconstructive surgery for that prior revascularization is a must so thank you for your patient hearing